Hello. According to, I'm leaning into you. Mm. According to a new Fox poll, Hillary Clinton is still dominating the Democratic race. But in the general election, it gets dicey. She would lose to Ben Carson, Donald Trump, Jeb Bush, and Carly Fiorina, and Carly Simon. And it's so weird. Meanwhile, in the same poll, Vice President Biden beats all the leading Republicans. So what does all of this mean going into this first big Democratic debate night? Let's ask the party panel. And tonight, it's Joanne Nozachinsky, Red Eye co-host and correspondent on The Greg Gutfeld Show. And sitting directly to her left, it is Michael Malice, author of Dear Reader, one of the finest books ever published by mankind. And Matt Welch, the editor-in-chief of Reason Magazine. If you're not subscribing, you're a communist, a freedom hater, and someone I don't want to know. So subscribe now. Hello, lady and gentlemen. Hi. 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 Good to have you. <laughs> I love you and your gingham, your giant blue and white check shirt. And red. Is my power animal and red tossed in for patriotic good yes. measure. Matt, I'm going to start with you. What should Hillary do tonight? I think that she should show that perhaps... Uh, not the entire Democratic Party has become socialist. Mm. I don't think she's going to do that necessarily, but I think that would be a sign of this much health in the Democratic Party right now. The, yeah. the party's all about income inequality. It's all about Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders. The Bernie mentum comes from, he talks about that stuff like our girlfriend Elizabeth Warren would do it. So everyone gets excited about that. So Hillary Clinton, who always was way more lefty than Bill, yeah. um, I, you know, she's going to be against someone who thinks that free trade makes everybody poor. Yeah. Uh, so will she do that? I, I would hope so, but I don't. She's going to jam it. a stake into Vampire Bill's heart. That's exactly what she, she's going to do. Uh, but what will she do if she's faced with a fiery Bernie Sanders and three other candidates who are out for blood? She's not going to do anything. Bernie Sanders already explicitly said he's not gunning for her. The other three aren't going to be able to land any body blows. And she was pretty good. Why not though? Why not? Because because they don't want is a season. But, Audition as our he's web not, he's, and yeah, yeah, chafing. Yeah, yeah. He's seasoned like in paprika and crazy sauce. Uh, I do like my paprika and crazy sauce by politicians, but these people are looking for the base to vote for them. So they're not playing to middle America. They're playing for the Democratic loons, the loony left to begin with. Yeah. So they can't risk looking like they're going to alienate the front runner and going after winner, a uh, woman. So yeah. if you look at 2008, no one went after her pretty hard and she kind of emerged unscathed. Because she's a woman, you should be nice to lady politicians because they're gentle, delicate flowers. Now, Joanne, you are someone you are an optimist and you want the underdogs yes. to do well. They have had so many opportunities, O'Malley, Chafee, and, and Webb, to really step up, right? Everyone's saying, oh, we, we don't have any candidates. We need Biden to run. No, you have three good men with good resumes, Chafee-ish. So why don't they, this is their opportunity to shine, and I really hope they do. And Hillary has said that she is not going to attack yeah. Bernie Sanders, but maybe the other three will, and I think that they should. Well, Matt, you and I were having a discussion about two years ago about the uh, the weak Democratic bench, and I was asking you, why don't the Democrats run someone with a war record who can actually uh, speak about foreign policy and the military with some bona fides, and who did you suggest? I suggested Jim Webb, and yeah. Lord, was I wrong about that. I mean, <laughs> I mean he's, he's actually... On paper, you're not wrong, though. Yeah, it's, that it's, it's, a, story. it's a huge, <laughs> it's a huge curiosity, this, because he's not yeah. only good about that, I mean, he was, and he's the Secretary of the Navy under Ronald Reagan. Reagan, so he's got like some chops, but he was also way out in front on police reform issues to the extent, I mean, Hillary Clinton's been awful on that her entire career. So if Black Lives Matter is supposed to mean policy, Jim Webb is in front of that policy and in better ways probably than Black Lives Get Matter Martin was. O'Malley started on that. Woo! Yeah. No, because then he had to say, I mean, all lives matter. I mean, black lives matter. Mm. Well, in a recent BuzzFeed podcast, Hillary Clinton said the weirdest thing about herself and that she doesn't sweat. Then her humor algorithm compelled her to crack jokes <laughs> about being a robot. Best theory Obviously. for Hillary's a yes. robot, zero sweat. <laughs> See, you guys are the first to realize that I'm really not even a human being. <laughs> I, I was constructed in a garage in Palo Alto this a very long a time ago. Are there more of you? <laughs> now, I, you know, I thought he threw away the plans. At least mm. that's what he told me when he programmed me, that there would be no more. <laughs> I'm just looking for a sharp instrument here so I can cut myself just for a little bit. Um, so <laughs> Hillary doesn't sweat. Does this, just hearing that and thinking about Hillary Clinton not sweating make you feel yucky? No, it makes me feel nostalgic for Small Wonder, that wonderful sitcom from the 80s with the wacky girl <laughs> robot and grew up. Oh. No, but they're desperately trying to have her have some sense of humor, personality. And I, I don't think she came off that badly. It certainly wasn't as bad as when Ted Cruz was doing his Simpsons impressions. But, I mean, that joke, it's remarkable, because it's actually funny on, yeah. the, on the printed page. As I was reading the screen, I was like, hey, it's a, it's a pretty good Everybody's joke. Everybody's on the printed page with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
but it's so incredibly unfunny in her delivery and creepy and. Uh, and it's it also one. It, it's not a, a spontaneous joke, joke, which is what yeah. you know. It was written clearly. And it's yeah. also roboticist. That's it exactly. Robots have Joanna been working Kinsky. hard mm -hmm. for years mm -hmm. to gain rights like humans. So for her to just joke about this like it's nothing, no, it's something. And I think that the American people should should uh, protest. Yeah, she just set uh, AI back by uh, 20 years. At least. And I'm not talking about the uh, the horrible uh, Steven Spielberg movie <laughs> where he tried to clean up Kubrick's mess. That that is no good. Even with you, Jude Law is a gigolo. Mm. Would you like to make Hillary Clinton sweat? <laughs> oh. On the spot. No. You're under oath. No. You're under oath. But I'm glad to know that she, that you must be the anti-Hillary Clinton if she doesn't sweat. Because <laughs> I, I sweat more than Whitney Houston in a sauna. But it's God healthy. I God want a healthy soul president. God <laughs> rest in soul sweat. in heaven. Like. I think that uh, Hillary Clinton, she has her work cut out for her. The robot joke fell flat. And tonight we will see. I mean, it's a big night. I agree that she is completely rusty with her debate performance. And Joanne, uh, we saw what Carly Fiorina was able to do in the first Republican debate. And I think that uh, one of these three probably won't do that. But I, I love your spirit. Thank you. Uh, but there, there is what's really nice <laughs> is uh, more opportunity for jokes. Yeah. I'm hoping that she tells a few more tonight. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yeah, if it turns into a friar's roast, that would be great. <laughs> Hi, I was into the music. It's great to talk to you. Saturday Night Live has announced that its November 7th show will be hosted by none other than El Donaldo, Donald Trump, one year and one day from Election Day. Trump last year, or last time he hosted SNL, it was in 2004, not when he was running for president. It's great to be here at Saturday Night Live, but I'll be completely honest. It's even better for Saturday Night Live that I'm here. <laughs> he wasn't joking. My panel is back. Joanna Zaczynski, Michael Malice, and Matt Welch. Let us discuss. Malice, will he be funny? Uh, he will can't not be funny. But however, let me get let me get serious for a second. <laughs> okay. Even though I also yes. can't not be funny. Oh, break it down, um, baby. There, Pat Buchanan was right in 92 that there was a cultural war in this country, and one of the big things that helped Reagan in 1980 is that he came from Hollywood. He had the establishment recognize that he's cool and he's interesting. Mm. So when Trump first started running, the Huffington Post put coverage of him in the entertainment section. Now, if the media is treating him as one of their own, this is going to be huge in terms of putting him over with the, the middle of America and not regarding him as this Republican freak conservative sideshow. Yeah. But they are, they're already there with him. They know him from his life of doing TV and from being an outsider size, you know, New York Post caricature person. They who don't really know him. Who benefits more, Trump or SNL? In this case, uh, uh, SNL, I yeah. think. You know, like, who's been watching SNL? The Hillary skit was excruciatingly bad, and it's just sort of a reminder of all the reasons why you don't watch the show. But she was still, you know, pretty much praised for her. Yeah. By who? Uh, well, the Washington Post. All right. The, uh, that one of their DC blogs was like, she really was quite a good actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, are they going to support him like they did Hillary? Uh, I think so, because I think, like Matt said, it's really going to be beneficial to the show if he's on. I do think that they will get great ratings. And the time is ideal. November yep. 7th, you know, we've just got a, a daylight savings. It's November 7th this year. Yeah, no, 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 I know. <laughs> but, like, because the, the, the days are shorter, yeah. you know, and seasonal right. affective disorder starts mm. to, you know, rear its ugly head, right. that we need, we need to laugh. We need some entertainment. And no one is better at entertaining than Donald Trump. Well, me, but also Donald oh. Trump. Yes. Oh. yes. And he is, a, he is a bright light. He is human UVB. Yes. So he will he will um, make all of the vitamin D that's dormant in our systems uh, proliferate, and he will save us from cancer. Other than for <laughs> dopes and losers, you know, who are the worst people on earth. I wasn't looking at you. I was, you did you gesture. gestured you in my direction. Gestured. Yeah. I meant like America. Yeah, I wasn't. Oh, it so. seemed like Matt and Michael together again, NBC's best sitcom of the year. <laughs> I think you guys Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? It's going to be a buddy comedy. <laughs> uh, what could he possibly do? What Do you think he'll do an impression of Hillary? Like he's going to do an him? impression of himself, probably, like talking himself. And yeah, he, I mean. He's got he's to go full drag. Go British or go home. No. Oh, I yeah. mean, look what it did to Rudy. That killed him in 2000. Donald's different. He, different rules. 
We don't have the same rules this time around. It'll be funny watching him play off against that actress who played Melania with some kind of weird Italian accent for no <laughs> reason. So, I mean, he's also going to have script approval, I'm sure. So yeah. they're not going to even as hit him Hillary that hard. did. Yeah. I mean, if they gave her script approval as it appears, they certainly did. Then they have to yeah, respond in kind, don't they? Yeah. Will they try and secretly skewer him? Because NBC, if well, he'll, he'll they had, a, they the had an uncomfortable exactly. parting of Lord, the ways after Lord Apprentice. Knows. Will they get back at him? I. Don't like Donald Trump, but uh, one of the, his better, more appealing characteristics, like he goes into lines where there's anti-Trump protesters, protesters. I don't know why that's a hard word to say, uh, and he signs their hats. And yeah. Like, oh, great, you know, like he, he's he having fun. It. You know why? Because people can't help themselves when it comes to celebrity. We have so much more to discuss with the panel. They're going to return to discuss Playboy's announcement. They will no longer show boobies. So if you say, I just read it for the articles, I'm going to have to believe you, Matt. Strategery. <laughs> Let's employ our own strategery. The panel is back. Joanna Zaczynski, Michael Malice, and Matt Welch. Uh, so who's going to make the most gas tonight, Joe? Ooh, I think Anderson Cooper. Uh, just because I still have in my in my head the image of Madonna just smacking him from behind at her concert, so I feel like uh, you know he might he might uh, still be feeling that and uh, <laughs> have a few faux pas. Uh, he he does evening. have uh, oh he's got Caribbean blue eyes and a full heart. <laughs> uh, but what will he do to the other candidates tonight on stage? Who's going to have the most gaffes? Uh, well, Anderson Cooper's going to pull his punches. He said he's not going to pit them against each other. I'm just waiting for Lincoln. Because everyone wants to keep it classy. Yeah. I'm just waiting for Lincoln Chafee to be asked to convert kilometers into miles and having to do the math in his head and completely, you know, be flummoxed. And I say we've had one President Lincoln and that was plenty. We've had, uh, I mean, Trump is right about the snooze fest because yeah. they actually yeah. agree, a lot of them, like on illegal immigration, a bunch of stuff like that. There's no daylight between any of them. Yeah. So to hear them not attack each other and all agree about stuff that maybe we agree with them, maybe we don't, it's going to be really If you're not going to go after Hillary's record, if you're not going to go after her server. Her name, you know, everything, yeah. What good are you? I mean, do you really want to win if, if that is not fair game? We will discover whether Jim Webb wants to win because he's a guy, the aneurysm is just sort of happening on the side of his head as he's speaking. He's kind of ferocious, Scotch-Irish type I of... Hope and maybe they're running for VP, right frankly. Maybe they want to be the vice presidential ticket, so yeah, they, they want to be nice to her. To, they're going to have to beat Elizabeth Warren up pretty good because yeah. she's already sitting back around. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. <laughs> it's a Persian. Um, <laughs> the interest <laughs> isn't just a place for the internet, rather. <laughs> it's not just a place for email and funny... <laughs> <laughs> for funny memes of cats. <laughs> it's a giant digital porn dumpster. In fact, there's so much free sex and nudity available online, I'm told, <laughs> that Playboy magazine can no longer compete, and they are dropping naked pictures from its famous men's magazine. So, Matt Welch, you are a magazine editor. You know these things. Is this a good strategy for Playboy? It's a death knell. It's like a, it's a, it's like when, when the, the magazines decide to go fortnightly or like biannually. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, it's a, you're, you're going to be mailing it in from now Now, on. I hear that Reason is going to take those pictures and then start running. Centerfolds, news. Ladies of Liberty, if you have any suggestions. I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran. Of course. <laughs> yeah. She's hot. She's actually, she's, she's dead. Rose Wilder Lane, Isabel Patterson. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick Gillespie. What's under that jacket, Nick? Let's see what's under that jacket. Get him in a cornfield in the house dress. Yeah. Well, I absolutely love it. Um, is it better as a gentleman's mag? Yeah, I think that it, it served its purpose. It's a, it's a kind of an anachronism, and yeah. they have a great brand to be kind of this kind of lad lit thing that Maxim kind of fell by the wayside and be kind of an edgier GQ. What, there's no reason for them not to rebrand, but this isn't f from choice. This is clearly out of necessity. Yeah, but they've said that uh, you know they've they've done the same thing on their website and they've had a fourfold increase in. in Internet traffic. Are people going to buy a paper version of Playboy without? Uh... I don't think so. I really don't because, you know, first Walden Books and now magazines. Yeah. It's like exactly what's happening right. to print. It's very sad. And I mean, with the Kindles, too. You know, no one needs to go out and buy these things anymore, except maybe for flights, in which case I'm happy there's no, no nudies in there. No, even Fred Willard has, uh, has switched to the Internet. The Fred Willard? Remember he was arrested for going to a pornographic yeah. theater and oh, that's right. making body congress with himself? Body <laughs> congress. Mm -hmm. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right. This week, Tom Brady took a swipe at some powerful brand names just because they happened to bleed high fructose corn syrup. You'll probably go out and drink Coca-Cola and think, oh, yeah, that's no problem. They can sell that, you know, to kids. That's, I mean, that's poison for kids. 
All right, the thing that worries me here is not that he's opposed to giving his own children Coca-Cola. He's the kind of person who says, there ought to be a law. Right. And he's going to lobby to get rid of Coca-Cola. Yeah, him and Michael Bloomberg, right? That's the that's the idea that those poor people are having, making choices that we don't like. Um, so, yeah, co Coke's bad, but let them sell <laughs> you it. You agree Coke is poison? I've always been on Team Pepsi ever since I was a little kid. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I'll go back to New Jersey. Come on. Don't, don't, don't start with Whoa. this. No, 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 okay. no, no. Team I'm Pepsi. You want to start this? I'll finish it. Uh, it, it's, it. Coke is black. It bubbles. It rots your teeth. And Pepsi's the choice of a new generation. Joe, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> so next year, you don't, you don't like, you don't like someone like Tom Brady demonizing. No, I don't think that anything should ever be labeled bad, evil, poison, because that's how kids get these complexes around food, and that's how eating disorders start. And I think it's very dangerous to do so. You need to teach your children moderation and that these things are a treat and not something to be had every day. I always teach my children moderation at weigh-in. When I <laughs> <laughs> yes. You weigh them. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> when you go full Romanian. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. You know what? You, because uh, I'm Lincoln Chafee, you are 14 grams heavier than you were yesterday. Maybe a little less cola. Thank you guys so much. Matt, Michael, Joe. Thank you. This was uh, one for the ages, and they're going to play this at my funeral.